morning. Okay, now I got to How are you this out. fine, beautiful day? So good to see everybody here this morning, here in the service, and then on those on Facebook Live. Um, please remember to fill out your Connect card that's in your um, bulletin um, so that we know that you are here. And for those at home, if you'll send a message, that would be great. My name is Sally Gregg, and I'll be your liturgist today. We have some announcements. So on uh, tonight, we have the marriage enrichment class at 7, but it's on Zoom. And then on Wednesday night, we have confirmation class at 515. And we also have the, uh, the youth fellowship. That's from my, my youth. We have FUMI so, uh, and First Kids. Um, Please remember that if you want a daily devotional, we do have the upper room available in the office. I am sad to announce that Daryl Schweitzer died this past week, so keep, um, keep the family in your prayers. So, um, and with all of that, then I will turn it over to Hayden for the prelude. You will please stand with me for the call to worship that's found in your bulletin. Something deep inside us calls us, beckons, beckons us. us. We are looking for truth that anchors, anchors us, us in, in the, the midst, midst of competing voices. We are searching for life that, that sparkles with joy and glows, glows with, with warmth. warmth. We are finding our way to Christ, to, to, to community, community, to, to love. love. And we are bold to sing, 
a resurrection song. Good morning. My name is Pam Becker. I'll be your hymn leader today. And as you remain standing, please uh, turn to hymn 327, Crown Him with Many Crowns. I know it's been two weeks since Easter, but my goodness, we should sing about the resurrection every Sunday, in my opinion. Here we go. Verses 1, 2, and 4. This is a hymn of praise. remain standing for our affirmation of faith. Amen to that song. Amen. All right. The Apostles' Creed is number 881. Let us read it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
you can be seated. It is a joy to be with you, and for those who are joining us online, my name is David Stewart, and I have the privilege of being the pastor here at First United Methodist Church. As we gather and worship this morning, I would invite you, if you're at this service, take care, Anthony, um, you're at this service that we had a joy at the 1017 service. Um, Madeline Stacy was baptized, and for those of you who um, may know her from the art world, uh, she's a prolific painter, even as a teenager, and many of you uh, not only seen and displayed her artwork in our art wall, but uh, helped send her to a competition and training for artists uh, last summer, and so uh, somebody who we have a heavy investment in, wonderful young lady did an outstanding testimonial video, and I would uh, invite you to see that on the Facebook Live or on our website uh, sometime during the week. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful testimony and uses her art uh, as a way to express herself in sharing her faith. So uh, I think you would uh, really appreciate it. It would be well worth your time uh, to see that. As we gather here in worship, we not only have uh, the joy of that baptism, uh, we have the very real need in our congregation and would invite you to continue praying. Uh, we are looking for someone to help and assist with the uh, youth ministry and uh, student ministries that we've had um, during the pandemic. We've lost both Blake and Amanda, so we're down a person and a half, so I'd like to find somebody. So. Please pray that God is already calling someone, that their heart is being moved, and uh, that they uh, find us and we find them, because this is an important ministry for us to continue well. We are grateful for the Davises to fill the gap. Um, we would like to uh, do something a little more stable as we uh, get the opportunity. And then we also share a concern that we lift up, and we have permission to do so uh, at this time in, in on the camera. But Daryl Schweitzer, a longtime member of the congregation, has passed away in Kansas City. Shirley is still recovering well from her uh, surgery, and uh, we just uh, continue to lift her up. Uh, it was time, and she says that. Uh, this is still in her heart, their church, and she will plan a memorial service here sometime Later this year, uh, hopefully during the summer, we'll let you know when the details are arranged. And I know many of you will want to be a part of that, as I will, to pay our respects to someone we all loved and cared for and who loved us uh, deeply. So as we do, we invite you now. This morning, as we prepare to go to God in prayer, we're going to take about 30 seconds of silence to center ourselves, and then I'll pray, and then we'll invite you to join us by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather in the quiet of this space, we give you thanks for the beautiful music, for the wonderful day and creation that we get to experience as the dogwoods and azaleas and other flowers and trees bloom forth. And Lord, in all of this, we know that you are proclaiming that you're alive. As our world opens and blooms forth, Lord, we pray that our souls would as well. Lord, we come to you praying for a time when we can experience your grace. That as we gather and worship like this, or we go in our silent places to be with you in prayer, that you are there, our rock and our redeemer. That we can rest in your unfailing grace and have your amazing arms surrounding us, letting us know that we are loved. 
And Lord, we're so grateful that when we come before you, we can pour our hearts out. That you are there to hear us, to be with us, to walk with us as we go through this life. Lord, we pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to enable and help us to become more fully who you've created us to be. Whether we're a young person learning to use the gifts that you have given us. Whether we're someone who's lived a lot of life and are longing for ways to continue to share love and life with others. Lord, we pray. We pray that we can be fully present to you and fully present to the people we love and share this journey of life with. As we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we get the beautiful music of our choir as we continue our worship this morning. I guess I always think I'm finished after the um, <laughs> anthem. The uh, scripture reading today is from Psalm uh, 62, verses 5 through 8. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, 
my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, thank you, Sally. So there's a, an old movie that seems extremely dated by today's uh, standards. It was a movie called Bicentennial Man about an android that becomes 200 years old. The android is originally introduced to us when he's purchased to be a servant in the house of a family. And the android, who they nickname Andrew, has a unique quality because he is programmed to be able to learn what we today commonly refer to as artificial intelligence. And he's wanting to learn, and the thing he wants to learn and wants to know the most is, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be human? A powerful question. We're in the middle of a series of sermons where we're beginning to look at how do we be both emotionally healthy and spiritually healthy at the same time? And there's this question about how many of us actually live most of our lives living as false selves? Now, sometimes that's because we intentionally put on masks and we don't want other people to know who we are and we intentionally keep people out. But my experience as a pastor is that most people simply do not know who they are. They're not in touch with what drives them, what motivates them, with who they are. And so Scaros uses for us the idea of knowing truly who we are and truly how we're in relationship with God. He uses a scale between one and a hundred where zero is the person who does not know themselves and does not know God. They're totally alone, isolated in the world. And 100 is the person who knows fully who they are and their relationship with God. And he uses Jesus as that example. So obviously most of us fall somewhere in the middle as we go. And the question is, can we move more towards Jesus as we grow in our spiritual life? And part of the challenge of doing that is coming to know who we are. Jesus does this when he begins to ask the question. He's asked the question about what is the greatest commandment? He says, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. But the second, love your neighbor as yourself, implies that we love other people when we know who we are. And when we love ourselves, we have a capacity to love others that is not there otherwise. So in his book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, he gives us a quote about what he thinks the goal is. I truly believe the greatest gift we can give to the world is our true self, living in loving union with God. Can we find out who we really are, who God created us to be, and live out the purpose that God has for us in this life? The problem is, so few of us take the time to really explore those questions. We're so busy with life. And one of the things that he does is he gives us sort of the symptoms of a false self. Now, folks, you may see yourself in some of these questions that I'm going to ask. And that is the hope. Unfortunately, I see myself all too well. Do you ever say yes when you really mean no? And folks, I understand this next one really well. I have a need for approval by others to feel good about myself. I own the fact I was a mama's boy and I wanted mama's approval. Still do. Part of who I am. I believe that if I make mistakes, I am a failure. There are a whole lot of people who make outward success part of who they are on the inside and they own that 
And folks, one that I see so often, particularly with adults dealing with children, and it's, it's truly sad. I criticize others in order to feel better about myself. I do what others want so they don't get mad at me. For any of us who were raised in homes where emotions flared and tempers flared and abuse was there, you learn to try to control everything so nobody gets upset. But that's unrealistic. I compare myself a lot to other people. Now, if you're feeling bad having heard those, he actually gives 15 of those, and you can really feel bad. Or we can take that as a place to start our conversation. And what I want to suggest this morning is the psalmist gives us a place to really dig into this idea. When you hear Psalm 62, For God alone my soul waits in silence. That is a powerful, powerful word for us. For those of us who are into contemplative spirituality, that idea that God alone waits for us in the silence is powerful. One of the things he suggests and one of the pieces that we take in our spiritual journey is we live in a world where there's noise and there's activity and there's always stuff going on. And it's so hard for us today to be still and to be silent and to know that God is there. In fact, one of the hardest things to do with young people today is to get them for five seconds to be still that they don't reach immediately for their phone. And so one of the suggestions that Wesley and others make as we enter our spiritual life comes from sort of traditional practices of the daily office that you start with a moment of silence instead of immediately going into the work of your devotions. If you chose to get the devotional book, Skeros will lead you in that direction. But you can do that if you do the upper room, if you do God calling, if you do the daily bread. There's lots of other devotionals that are out there but what would it be like to start with a couple of minutes of silence? And I know that's painful at first for people in our world. But you'll be amazed what can happen when you get comfortable with a couple of minutes of silence. Because it's in those moments of quiet where God can begin to talk to us. And we can begin to hear God's voice that is always there something powerful begins to happen when we still ourselves in our lives, when we still those voices that are constantly inside of us. Something amazing happens when we're still and experience God's presence. And then that psalm gives us the emotional health piece as well. Pour out your heart before God. So many of us have few safe places in our lives where we can really appropriately pour out our hearts. Now, we all know the person who, when you meet them, just dump everything. There are those. But the reality is most of us are the opposite. We hold on. We don't want people to know what's really going on inside there's something powerful about having a safe place to pour those out and to get in touch with what's really happening. Because, folks, here's the reality. Our bodies are wired by God to experience things. We have emotions. Emotions can be anger, frustration. Emotions can be joy and love. And all of those are wonderful to be experienced. It's a part of who we are. When we can name them and bring them to consciousness, those emotions become feelings. 
But you have the emotions whether you acknowledge them or not. How many of us get in a tense situation and all of a sudden feel our body tightening up or we're in a scary place and we grab on or we hold on or our fists clench? How many of us are in a place where we're having fun and all of a sudden feel our body relax and there's a a sense of joy? Now, I'm going to do something that's just a little cheesy. But indulge me for a second. Would all of you who are able please stand up? Thank you for doing that. You're welcome and you please can be seated. Now, when I said that, all of you had an emotional reaction. Some of you, deep down inside of you, didn't want to do it. You were afraid of being inconspicuous. You may have been like a person I had at an earlier service who was in the middle of a really good nap (laughs) and had it broken. On the other hand, some of you may have been excited to kind of see what I was going to do next. Well, I will tell you, I'm excited because what you did is you gave me the ability this week to tell folks that I meet that I got a standing ovation during the middle of my sermon. Well, you didn't actually give me the ovation, but you did stand. The question is, what were you feeling? Could you put your words to it? Because there were emotions going on inside of you, and there were all kinds of unspoken things that happened as you stood. Some excited some dreading. Could you name them? He challenges us to know ourself and God by feeling better. Something happens when we make those feelings conscious. Begin to know by being curious. I'm feeling angry. The fact that I put that into words, something we try to teach kids at younger ages these days, takes some of the energy out of the negative feeling and creates a sense of curiosity. Why am I feeling angry? What's going on? The same thing can be true on the other side. Why am I anxious? Why is my heart racing? Why am I excited, anticipating something that's going to happen? When we begin to put words to it, when we begin to ask those curious kinds of questions, then all of a sudden we can manage those feelings better. I don't have to act on them. I can be human in being able to make the choice. I'm no longer just an animal that acts out of instinct. But I choose whether to act on that anger or whether to just know I'm in a difficult spot. Folks, this is something Jesus showed us. In being fully human, when Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is anxious and there's danger ahead of him. And he pours it out to God in his prayer when he names it and he says, God, Please let this cup pass from me. I know Judas has gone to get others and they are coming and they are here to do me harm. And I'm scared. And appropriately frightened. And I don't want to do this. A very full human response. And then his response, but not my will. Your will, God. I've named what I'm feeling. But now what am I called to do about it? I don't have to run. I don't have to fight. I know what I'm called to do. Folks, the same is true for us. How would you prefer to be treated? What if we did this taking our temperature? 
using a thermometer to sort of go, what's going on inside of my soul, inside of my heart? And we became curious about why we're feeling certain things. And we began to name them and to bring them to the surface. Would we then be better to ask, okay, God, what are you calling me to do? Is this something I need to lean into and go with the feeling? Or is this something I need to do something else? Folks, I've shared with you often that my family has its challenges. And there's lots of unspoken things that happen. All families have this. But one of those is because of some of the hurt and pain in our lives that my mom is one of those who just has a hard time saying goodbye. And I cannot tell you how awkward it is that within the last couple of hours of us being together, because being together is always a big trip and there's lots of things that go because we've always lived a long way apart, that she begins to shut down and to push us away. And instead of leaving feeling loved, we always feel pushed away. So Nancy and I have been very conscious of that as we deal with our kids. As our kids have become adults and they come and go and they're no longer at our home all the time, that when they leave, it's done with hugs. It's done with prayers. And it's done with a, really glad you came. Can't wait till we get together again. Love you. Go conquer the world. We try to create a different reality. Folks, that's the human condition. We feel things. We have emotions. They're real. How we choose to deal with them and how we choose to treat the other people around us is what makes us spiritual and what makes us a part of God and what allows us to show love and kindness in a world that doesn't understand it at all. And we can be both fully human, experiencing the full range of human emotions, but also fully, fully in touch with what God is calling us to do. And how we can love God and love our neighbor fully. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful. We're grateful for your love in our life. And that you are our rock and our refuge. And that we get to hang on to you. And we can hear your still, small voice when we're willing to listen. And Lord, help us to hear the nudges of your Holy Spirit and to not just respond and react to what the world sends our way, but to understand that through your grace, we are called to choose love life in the face of all the other stimulus that's out there. And we pray that we are faithful in doing that in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Dave, when you told us to stand up and then you asked us how we felt, I said, I thought to myself, well, he told me to, so I did it. Did you all feel that way? Wouldn't that be great if we felt that way with God? Well, he told me to, so I did it. But we fight with him. This last hymn is about obedience. Where he leads me, I will follow because he will give us grace and glory and the strength to do it. Please stand as we sing uh, hymn number 338. Where he leads me, we'll do verses 1, 3, and 4.
I can hear my Savior calling. Those words right there. Do you create the space and the quiet to be able to hear your Savior calling? I invite you to do that as we go. And the grace and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, hearing the words of the psalmist, it's our refuge, our strength. Be able to rest contently in his loving arms. And then to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit calling us, leading us into that new life in Christ that we experience, that we may become fully who God has called us to be. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.